Hello. What can, are you doing in there, son? Can you see that, Broomy? That is a dead a, huntsman spider inside your brake caliper. And a bit of his uh, juice coming out as well. No wonder they were squealing. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Australia. Now the VF's on the hoist today, Broomy. What are we doing? We are going to change the brakes. You might have seen a recent video on our everything we liked and didn't like about this car, and the brakes were one of them. So today, we're going to fix it. Broomy, time for a bit of maintenance on the uh, VF, mate. Yeah, so we did a video recently on this VF about everything we liked and didn't like. One of the things we had uh, major issues with is the brakes, especially the front brakes. So I believe they're well below where they need to be in terms of wear. So said in the video, we were going to uh, look at something other than just the GM brakes or whatever that come from factory on it. And I, I wanted to run something good like uh, Bendix. Uh, Lucky Vels Bendix happened to be watching at the time and said, hey, we can sort you out with a set of uh, pads and also rotors, which was real news to me because I did not know uh, Bendix did rotors and apparently uh, not many prob out people out there probably do either because yeah, I didn't they, know either. Yeah, they're just brand new to market. So um, these... Apparently they're doing them for a lot of the popular makes and models and some of the popular dual cabs, they're doing complete kits. Yeah, it looks to be a lot of four by four stuff, yeah. uh, four by four stuff on there. So I'll just take these out. These aren't, uh, and these are called their ultimate rotors, I believe. Yeah, yeah, so nice. from what I, I can feel here also, um, it doesn't feel like a normal, it, normally there'll be a, like a coating, an anti-rust inhibitor coating on most discs you buy. As far as we were these, you can just whack these straight on the car. So it saves, you know, if you're running a workshop or whatever and how many times you got to change brakes and that, if you can just whack these on the car without actually having to clean it all off and stuff like that, it saves, obviously, if you know, if you're buying this kind of stuff and rags and the time and labor to do it to clean all four corners and that, there's money savings there to be had as well. Um, but yeah, so these, these are the front ones. These are definitely the fronts. So you say yeah. look big off the car. They do, don't they? They don't. Um, they don't look that big on the car. So you'll see here also it says um, 30. So 30 millimeters is, um, I believe that's the minimum. minimum so where? if I get, so these are some of the tools you might need to to service your brakes. So this is um, essentially a brake, a disc rotor uh, vernier caliper. So if I put that on there. You can see there that's pretty normal at uh, two and a half mil or so so it's uh, 32 um, yeah so the minimum so if you were to get these on and we'll check the new the old ones when they come off if they're below 30 uh, you know it's definitely time to to change rotors so you know if you if you go to get your car service somewhere and um, you think oh they just want to scam me or whatever for changing the brakes um, even ask them to to tell see what that measurement is and um, if it's the if it's below that that measurement that's stamped on the outside of the rotor, yeah, you have to change them because they're not designed to keep on wearing um, to the point where you've probably seen memes on the internet where mm. <laughs> you can see the veins and all that showing through. But so these ones have there's all different sort of styles. These ones have got the dimples. Yep. On them. Yeah. So they're not they're not drilled all the way through. So these are similar to maybe what you would call slotted. Um, yeah. I don't really like the cross drilled ones. Uh, I've had I've had them on cars before. And I've, I've had them crack, so... Yeah, mine, my Megane has them standard, but they've just got sol like a normal solid disc on them now. Yeah, yeah, so um, these are good. I mean, they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll help wipe off even more of the heat, yeah. not that we'll need let's, it in uh, the, the, the Commodore. Let's The rears, I'd imagine, will be more of the same. So these ones run a, I guess what you not a performance style caliper. On the on the VF. Yeah, so they run a big Brembo on the front. You can see the size yeah, of the, the size distance. difference. And on the rear in the Series One, they just run a standard Commodore they, caliper. Are so they like a twin piston type. I think they're a single. They're probably single. just a, a single piston or yeah. something almost. They might be a twin piston. I haven't. We'll have a look at it soon. But um, I mean, yeah, if you've got a base model Commodore, it's probably the same same rear caliper as and disc as as this one does. So up front, um, Series Two had the better setup all round, but Series One just had that. And I'll just uh, can open these here. So I think that's, um, these are the ultimate uh, pads and this blue compound I think really helps uh, bedding them in. So you've probably heard about people with maybe um, when you put new brakes on that you have to drive to a certain speed and then brake and then do it a few times to bed pads in. Um, the ultimate compound uh, doesn't require that and it, it's got this material here to bed the pads in properly. So, because uh, if you get other pads and you don't bed them in properly, they can glaze off and they'll never actually break properly. Mm. So that's good because 
I really just baby this car, so when I need it to stop, I need it to stop. And again, same deal. So that's cool. Let's get our uh, hands dirty. Should I wear gloves? The internet loves, hands. loves your black gloves. Maybe I'll go with the heavy duty sort of gloves to take the tires off. And then, uh, and then we'll go with the no gloves maybe. All right, let's get into it. I don't want to get mad filthy hands and these brakes are gonna put a lot of dust on it. So I just use brake and parts cleaner to clean the hell out of everything. So what are we doing first? We're gonna take the pads out? Take the pads out first because what I'll need to do is these bleed nipples up here, uh, as it wears down, the pistons in here push forward and what we need to do is push them back. However, we need to release the pressure in this whole system, especially with ABS and that'll all be locked up. So we'll release the bleed nipple here. Um, we'll just force the, the pistons back here. We'll push some fluid out, uh, lock it off so there's no air left in the system, pull the pads out and we'll be able to whack the, uh, the new ones back in. The bleed is always at the top. So if we're shooting fluid out, and it only shoots a little bit out, uh, the system will still be all pressurized. So you can see now some of the fluid gets released. If I just pull back on the caliper a bit, you can see it's pushing fluid up there and that comes out much easier. All right, she's gonna blow. Uh, let me just go into the reservoir. If I push it back. Oh, I told you it was gonna blow. You got a squirter. <laughs> It shouldn't, uh, I think it's broken. Be, oh no, it's full, that also. So just side by side comparison here. Same size, same dimensions, but um, yeah, obviously this one with the, the grooves and the dimples and, and much better uh, ability to disperse the heat, which is the uh, enemy of all braking systems. So any way you can get the heat out from here better means these things will work better, so. Time to uh, chuck these on, I'll take my gloves off, so keep these just nice and clean. This is a floating uh, disc setup, so I'll just use one wheel stud to, to locate them. I want to have calipers free hanging just in midair, hanging off the uh, hose. So I just had a cable tie there, holding everything in place. So some brake pads are squeal and you can put some anti-season stuff on the back of them, but they're really noticed. Uh, any of the Bendix Ultimate pads squealing before when I've used them, so I'm not, I'm not going to put them in. You like to live dangerously, Brumie. Dangerously in the comments section. Dangerous in the comments section. So minimum thickness of these should be uh, 30 mils. So if we just take a measurement there, and that's uh, definitely under 30 so 29.2 yeah, and that's so these probably should have been replaced some time ago and I can feel with my fingers there are some unbelievable grooves in this thing you, I mean you can probably easily see them on camera but uh, I'm not sure if that's rock or something's got on there or whatever but you can see here's you know, the pads material seems to be delaminating yeah. or something there on the corners there's as well so. They don't really look at, these are a wear indicator. So if you start hearing squealing from your, from your uh, braking system, it, it often could be because of this, this little dragger. This is meant to make noise and well, it won't do stuff like this to your discs. But if you hear that, uh, that's already too late, pretty much. You hear a squealing from your discs uh, brake system, get them replaced immediately because it's probably this metal and metal contact. These cars have a hand, an internal handbrake assembly inside the sort of drum here. So we'll see that when we take the uh, when we take the calipers and the disc off. And what I've got is a caliper rewind tool. I'm just using one of the old pads here, and you can see the the piston is is out a bit. And what I'm just going to do is use this to push it back in its home because the new pads are obviously a lot wider and thicker because they're brand new. And what this does is just push that piston back home means we can install a new caliper, so that's it. It's a very easy, cheap hand tool. Uh, I forget, actually I think I got this one from Bunnings. All right, so you see a bit of surface rust around the hub here on the face of this disc, that's pretty normal. Uh, easiest way to get this, make it uh, start moving in, because you might find it's not budging, 
is spray a bit of penetrating fluid in there and then just like a flywheel on the back of an engine too, just give it some light taps and then you'll find we're good to go. And there's that internal handbrake assembly I was talking about before. So we've got both the discs here, as you can see the same. Uh, this little locator here is for internal handbrake adjustment. So you wind it around to where there's a little, almost like a drum brake, and just, just a little pinwheel that you, you flick and you can adjust them in and out. These, again, the nice coated center and uh, the coated, and I can feel there's no coating on these as well. So it's got that new tech. So we can grab this, chuck it straight on. And you're not going to be able to see it, but just in there, if I was to put a screwdriver in there, I'd be able to flick a little wheel forward and back, and that would adjust that internal handbrake in and out. So as you can see, I can just move it around now, which is, is perfect. So we'll whack that back in there. Same, but different, which is good. That means they're going to go in where they need to. So what was that, Brimmy? Less than two hours? Front yeah. and back all done. Yeah, then including setting up the camera gear, 700 interruptions from the kid because it's school holidays time and definitely taking our time. So yeah, nice and easy really. But uh, yeah, special thanks for Bendix for supplying the uh, pads and the rotors. It's nice now that you can just buy, obviously matching. These are the ultimate, ultimate pads, ultimate rotors. Mm -hmm. And they stock them for most, you know, popular current makes and models. They do a lot of full drive stuff. Yeah. I think yeah. they supply them in a kit if I'm not, mis not mistaken. Yeah, I saw that on their Instagram account, so head over to there or head over to bendix.com.au, but that's enough uh, for this today. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen previous episode of this car, what we liked and didn't like about it, check that out, and um, yeah, there'll be a bit more content on this thing uh, coming its way. So if you like uh, Holdens and Commodores, uh, stay tuned. Until then, catch you next time.